Good evening. Uh, before I call the meeting to order, there was a sign-up sheet out front, and there are three persons signed up. If you're here to speak and you haven't signed up, please take care of it now so that when we start our meeting, we'll be set. Since I see no one stirring, I call to order the Baltimore County Board of Education's public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2020 capital budget. The sign-up sheet was available to the public prior to the meeting for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's hearing. Each speaker is afforded up to three minutes to discuss his or her issue. As your name is called, please come forward uh, to speak. Uh, the timer on the table will tell you when your three minutes is up and when uh, uh, you see it drops to zero, please conclude your remarks. Uh, our first speaker is Marcy Cook. Good evening. Good evening, Chairman Gillis and members of the board. I'm Marcy Cook, I'm the Vice President of TAPCO and I'm bringing remarks on behalf of President Abby Baton who had prior engagement tonight and couldn't be here. We applaud the work that the County Executive Kem Kevin Kaminitz accomplished during his tenure. His untimely death left a great hole for all in Baltimore County. We are hopeful the next County Executive will continue his legacy of air conditioning, not only the eight schools left after this year, but also those schools that are partially air conditioned or have old chillers that can't handle the load put on them from not only warmer weather, but also technology devices of all kinds that add to the heat conditions in our school. We need 21st century schools for our students. We should be demanding the best for all our students, not just for those that happen to be lucky enough to attend a renovated or new school. Beginning in the 1980s, we have been continually underfunding maintenance in our school system and push the problems into the future. We built schools that were the cheapest without regard to quality. Those practices have come back to haunt us. There should be a comprehensive plan between the state, the county, and the school system to not only reverse the damage done by decades of neglect, but to make our schools the showcase our children deserve. There are no quick fixes to this issue, but a well thought out plan would go a long way to make this a reality. Thank you, Ms. Cook. Our next speaker is Tom Le Lenegro. Very good, Mr. Lenegro. Thank you very much for the opportunity tonight. Uh, my name is Tom Lenegro. I live at 1911 Billy Barton Circle. Our neighborhood is the Hunt Cup Hill Association. Uh, our neighborhood is about two or three miles from the Hunt Valley shopping area and about 11 or 12 miles from Reisterstown. Uh, as I'm sure you can visualize from this, that the neighborhood socializes and its recreational activities are centered around the Cockeysville Timonium area. Uh, a primary intersection in our neighborhood is the corner of Billy Barton Circle and Gent Road. Hunt Cup Hill is on the west side of Gent Road in the Reisterstown School District. The neighbors on the east side of Gent Road are in the Cockeysville School District. For the first 30 years of the neighborhood, Hunt Cup Hill children under a, an, an exception from the Baltimore County Public Schools, were allowed to attend schools in the Cockeysville Timonium District where their other neighborhood friends and where their non-school lives were oriented. This accommodation was rescinded seven years ago. The stated reason was overcrowded in the Cockeysville Timonium area, uh, although the schools in the Reisterstown District were also overcrowded. This has been more than an inconvenience. It's impacted the social fabric of the neighborhood for both sides of Gent Road. The kids uh, play together after school, they go to the same sports teams, they go to the same scout clubs, uh, but they go to different places when they go to school and it splits the neighborhood. We're asking that the school board in this planning process include the Hunt Cup Hill neighborhood in the Cockeysville Comonium School District so that they can, so that our kids can go to schools in the community they live and where their brothers and sisters uh, also attended. Thank you very much. I have some additional information if I can leave it, and I hope you can, essentially what we're asking is that you uh, restore the, re the or physically realign our neighborhood into the Cockeysville Timonium School District areas and plan your sizing for that event. Thank you very much, and perhaps Mr. Young would be kind enough to uh, take the hand off of your materials there.
Our next speaker, she even knows before we call her name, Amy Freeman. Good evening, board members, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. I'm speaking for the Central Area Education Advisory Council. And although there are still great needs for middle and high school, I know with the upcoming um, discussions we will be having, I won't address that tonight. I wanted to focus on um, the need for additional elementary seats in the central area. Our most overcrowded elementary schools in the central area are Oakley Elementary, currently at 130% capacity, Pleasant Plains Elementary, which is currently at 129% capacity, and the 5th District Elementary School, which is at 115% capacity. By 2020, those numbers increased to 135% for Oakley and 154% capacity for the 5th District Elementary School. There are no plans currently in place for these schools. Throughout the central area, there's currently a deficit of about 300 elementary seats overall. By 2020, it goes up to 400. By 2025, more than 750 seat deficit in the central area. So for the fiscal year 2020 capital budget, I ask that you fund additional elementary seats to address the overcrowding of elementary schools in the central area. And I'll also add that on the 2014 building um, assessment for 5th District Elementary was rated 1.9, so there are needs other than capacity for 5th District Elementary, so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Freeman. You're as frequent a visitor to this building as the board members are, back-to-back -back nights. Um, there were three speakers. We've had three speakers. Um, and if no one else uh, has come forward to sign up, um, I will give you my closing remarks, which are that the proposed fiscal year 2020 capital budget is scheduled to be presented to the board at its August 7, 2018 meeting, and the board's work session on the budget will take place on August 21, 2018. Further, the board is scheduled to vote on the 2020 capital budget uh, request at its September 11, 2018 meeting. Uh, if there are no further comments, we're adjourned. <laughs>